NAD. It's received a lot of attention lately and a little bit of controversy. We're going to dive into exactly what is NAD, why is it so vital to every cell in our body, and whether it makes sense for some people to support their NAD levels in their body, and why it doesn't make sense for most people to take IV NAD. So NAD, or nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, is absolutely critical to every cell in your body. To simplify things down, think of it in two different roles. First role is to help generate ATPs within your cells. In this redox role, it is basically an electron shuffler, and it's going NAD to NADH back and forth. NAD is not consumed in this role, so it's just reused over and over again. And it's absolutely critical for your energy within your cell, your ATP production. The second role is where NAD acts like a cofactor. In this role, it is consumed. In this role, which can include over 500 enzymatic reactions, it is doing things like DNA repair, which is going on nonstop in your body via parts. It's also activating sirtuins. NAD's ability to activate sirtuins is what's fueled a lot of the lifespan talk around NAD. So what do we know about NAD? We know that it peaks around the age of 20 and it declines significantly with age. If you just look at the decades, by the time you're 40, the amount of NAD you have in your body is about 40% less than what you have when you're 20. By the time you're 60, roughly 60% less than what you had when you were 20. We know that the NAD cycles throughout the day multiple times. So your NAD numbers actually cycle um, over and over again. Uh, we also know that it can peak around midday. So there's a circadian rhythm. It's tied into our circadian rhythm as well. So why can't we just take NAD? That seems like a real low hanging fruit, right? We, uh, we get older, we have less NAD, we take more NAD. Well, NAD is very unstable, degrades quickly, and it can't cross cell membranes. That's where the NAD precursors come into play. So these are oral ways to take NAD. NR, nicotinamide, riboside, and NMN are the two most common. Uh, NR is more stable than NAD and can enter cell membranes quite well, especially skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle prefers NR and that's been shown in human muscle biopsies. NMN is basically NR plus a phosphate. So those are the two most common oral supplements. There's also NAM. NAM is just nicotinamide. That's the N in the NAD. So when NAD is broken down, NAM plus its byproducts is what you get. And then that is goes into something called salvage pathway and is recycled back to NAD. So all of these occur naturally in the body and they constantly are going from, you know, NR to NMN, once it's in the cell, then to NAD, to NAM, then back to NAD. So this, these are just natural cycles. And uh, the oral precursors are a way for us to move the NAD level. We also know that if you take oral NR or NMN, it does increase your NAD levels. So what are the potential health span benefits? Better mitochondrial function, improved insulin sensitivity, and better vascular health are a few health span potential benefits. What about lifespan benefits? Well, there was a study that showed increased lifespan with NAD supplementation in mice, but then when the ITP or the interventions testing program tried to duplicate that study, it was not able to. Did they use too much NAD precursors and potentially um, cause other 
problems downside because of an increased NAM? Possibly. I would focus on the health span benefits more than the lifespan benefits until that's further clarified. There's a lot of studies showing health span benefits. The one I like the most actually has to do with skin. Now, skin levels of NAD drop more rapidly than the rest of the organs in the body. And it has a high cellular turnover, so that makes sense. In this study, 386 people who had previously at least two skin cancers or more, not melanomas, were given NAD support for a year. The placebo was not given NAD support. At the end of one year, the group that had NAD support had a 23% reduced incidence of new skin cancers. The interesting thing was once they stopped that NAD support, after six months, the treaty group went back to the same level of incidence for skin cancers as the placebo group once you took away the NAD support. So to me, that gives me confidence that NAD support especially in these high turnover tissues like the skin, makes sense. What about IV NAD? The reason I think IV NAD is a bad idea for most people, the only exception should be people who are doing it for neurologic reasons, so TBI, traumatic brain injury, or potentially depression that's being evaluated, it can make sense there. But if someone's taking IV NAD treatment thinking, oh, this has gotta be better than oral, they're actually, I think, doing themselves a disservice. The body has a lot of feedback loops, and this is a good example of that. That NAD, when it goes into your bloodstream, it is absolutely not going into cells. It can't go into cells. It can get converted to NR, then go into skeletal muscle, but after the skeletal muscle's had enough, there's not gonna be any more going into the cell. So you're gonna have a big bump of NAM because that NAD is broken down quickly, and it broke, it's broken down into NAM plus the Vibrox. Uh, a big bump of NAM in your system is not good for two reasons. Number one, there's a feedback loop where NAM actually deactivates the sirtuins, the very ones you're trying to activate with NAD. You see it binds to the same receptor that the NAD would be binding to to activate the sirtuins. So if you're doing it for lifespan benefits, I think you're actually working against yourself. The other place it's not a good idea is when you get that NAM bump, the body tries to get rid of that NAM. Well, NAM has a high affinity for methyl groups. So you basically are depleting your methyl groups in your body. And the way your body gets rid of that excess NAM is using a methyl group. So that is not have very good benefits regarding your epigenetics. We don't want to deplete our methyl groups. So those are the reasons that IV NAD treatment for someone who's trying to get lifespan benefits does not make sense and can potentially be dangerous. What do we know? We know that NAD is absolutely essential for healthy living. We know that it definitely declines with age. We know that oral NAD support in conservative doses of 500 to 1000 milligrams is safe. But please run it past your healthcare provider. Make sure it makes sense for you. Thank you.